my slides up. They are. Hi. Uh, so I come from a very small family. Uh, it's basically all my life it's been me, my mom, my dad, and my sister. Um, we do occasional grandparents in the picture, one grandmother in particular. So it feels very weird every time I uh, head to WordCamp Europe. So I feel like I'm heading to the most, the biggest family reunion on Earth. <laughs> uh, it's, it's almost like it's overwhelming and terrifying and like nice at the same time. It's pretty awesome. Um, and my favorite thing is um, how I how I can't seem to go for the first three hours without being hugged every 15 seconds. <laughs> it's so, so awesome. And then my other favorite thing is how my name gets <laughs> pronounced incorrectly and super enthusiastically and lovingly every 15 seconds as well. I love it. It's really, really great. Um, it's great to be having my coffee in Paris with you. Uh, Simon said that uh, that was the last slide uh, of my presentation in last year's WordCamp Europe. Last year, we were 60 people from 68 countries at WordCamp Europe. Uh, this year, I think we're even more. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there are like, people from 82 different countries this year. That's such a growth. So um, I'm going to repeat myself and say hello world and welcome to Paris. <laughs> um, and more or less, uh, everyone that's here speaks two languages. We speak English to some extent, and we speak WordPress. And um, I started learning English quite late and the WordPress even later. Um, but this particular story uh, is about languages, and I learned that from my, my grandmother that I mentioned before, um, who, uh, because I was born in communist Bulgaria, <laughs> um, liked to tell me biblical stories as bedtime stories, and she didn't really tell me they were from the Bible, because that wasn't really, you know, that was quite frowned upon uh, back at that time. Um, so the story is about how people once spoke one language, everyone spoke the same language, and how uh, languages were created by vengeful gods that wanted to separate people because they were beginning to get too close to heaven, building this amazing tower that would get them closer to the heavens. So that the vengeful God kind of separated them and scattered them across the world and made them speak different languages so they can't understand each other. And the moral of the story, Granny would say, while also like asking me, how are your English and German and Russian lessons going, <laughs> was that uh, the power to listen, hear, and understand each other makes us do things that otherwise seem impossible. And languages are really our ticket to a different show, to the world of somebody else, to something different than what we are used to. Uh, and people spend years, centuries, because I chose to believe in that story, even though it was biblical. Um, but people spend centuries learning languages to be able to regain that power. And um, in the meantime, though, <laughs> religion, traditions, politics, all of this evolved and took deep root within all of us. And on top of that, <laughs> we got the internet. And communication started being a little bit more complex just because we got that new level on top of already having to communicate in a language that was foreign for most of us. <laughs> Communicating without seeing each other. Luckily, other languages came to be like programming languages. <laughs> and uh, that's how we got WordPress. Today, WordPress is created by thousands of people everywhere. And since its inception, it was quite an international project. It has a global community these days, uh, and people um, translate it in more than 160 languages. So in theory, WordPress has kind of gone beyond borders, right? 
There is a passionate global community, a slice of which we have today. And um, why I'm here today is to talk to you a little bit about how can we understand each other better. And a bit of the lessons that I've learned in these past several years since I got involved with the WordPress community. Because I had no idea before. I had zero idea before. <laughs> um, the first time I came to France, I was petrified to open my mouth. Because the only thing I knew was that the French won't speak English to you. And they're going to frown, frown at you when you try speaking English to them. They're not, even if they understand you, they're not going to respond. <laughs> I don't even remember who told me this, but for two days, all I did was this. <laughs> and then um, um, somebody, from, somebody from my country, a uh, clever, sarcastic designer called Tianko Tsvetkov, started mapping the world stereotypes. And, um, <laughs> and I kind of got why I was so petrified to come to France, you know. And some of these maps, you know, you should look them up. They're quite amazing. Some of these maps are quite hilarious. There is, there's quite a bit of, like, a lot of offensive stuff about that as well. Some are hilarious, you know. Some are a bit exaggerated, but some hit right where it hurts, especially if you're watching the map of your own stereotypes. Um, and uh, all the insecurities and the limitations that came from the fact that I grew up, on, grew up in a small Eastern European country that had no self-respect whatsoever. <laughs> There is a Chinese curse that says, may you live in interesting times. There is a little controversy if it's really a Chinese curse, but like I looked it up and there's enough evidence that it's like a Chinese curse. Um, the literal translation is quite different, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we are quite cursed. Um, our world is super complicated, especially today. The vision forces, uh, forces that you know, it was like a huge question mark on democracy these days. And uh, there are conflicts everywhere and all that. Um, and all that kind of pushes people back into their own shells, you know. And we've witnessed walls being built around us for centuries. Some physical, some mental. Walls used to divide us, to position us as different, to determine our different social statuses. As far back as history goes, there were walls being built, but also torn down. Compared to the chaos of the reality, our WordPress world seems quite amazing. You know, WordPress managed to gather a global community behind it, and people somehow work together often not knowing where everyone is coming from. I'm not saying there are, no there are no problems, because there are. But our virtual world seems relatively safe. I got involved in WordPress. I, wanted, I always wanted to put that on a slide, by the way, <laughs> like really, really, since the first WordCamp Europe. I got involved with WordPress in 2011, but really got involved in WordPress in 2013 in Leiden. Um, I had barely been to a local work camp before, before I landed, uh, landed, landed in Leiden. And uh, I have no idea how to begin to describe to you how insignificant I felt when I first caught a glimpse of the global WordPress community. I was somebody that nobody knew. Uh, I was not a developer. It wasn't my place there. Uh, I didn't speak the language very well. Um, and uh, I, don't, I didn't understand any of the programmatic talks. I had only used the platform to build a couple of small sites. And, uh, but the WordPress community and the Polyglot community somehow happened to me uh, at Contribute Today. And naturally, there was trouble with the Wi-Fi. So I was like browsing around the tables and uh, looking for where to sit. And um, reaching out the Polyglot's table, 
I found myself staring at Zay. And the Polyglots team. This is a picture of the Polyglots team from uh, last year in Vienna. Uh, we were quite a smaller table with Leiden, but still, there were people from Japan, the Netherlands, Brazil, Georgia, Romania, all over Europe. Countries that I couldn't back then even put on a map. And uh, I sat on the same table with them. And I don't think I ever left that table after. The person leading the polyglots team, <laughs> uh, the true polyglot, master of five languages, uh, somebody that someone once described as the most interesting person in the world, <laughs> uh, was there at that table. And I asked, can I sit at your table? Sure, he said. He's just looking through his glasses. And um, I had never had a good understanding of people. I think they told me a couple of very valuable lessons at the beginning that seemed very vague, but somehow worked out. Um, I was never patient. I didn't have a good understanding of different cultures. I only spoke English. I never even had a grasp of any other language. Um, one thing I had was commitment to learn, though, uh, and uh, I had really good teachers. I picked up the role of uh, kind of leading the community part of the Polyglots team, um, I think by chance, and um, from this guy, from Zay. And um, I never thought that I would be able to fill his shoes. I don't think I ever will. Um, but I was super terrified about how to talk to people, because I didn't know anyone, and I didn't know if I wasn't going to unconsciously offend anyone by saying something. And, um, and then he said this. People just need someone to really listen to them. I said, really? It can't be that simple. <laughs> he said, no, it's not. You have to find a reasonable one when there are conflicts. There's always one. Don't jump into conversations without you doing your research, without knowing who you're talking to. There's a lot of back history, just ask me. But most of all, be kind, respectful, and graceful. I am as graceful as an elephant in a glass door, um, and uh, I'm never going to be grace as graceful as uh, my mentor. But I'm trying to face my demons the best way I can, and I have a lot of challenges. There are a lot of challenges in communicating across cultures. And that begins with me not being an, uh, a native English speaker, like a lot of the polyglot community. For non-English speakers, it's sometimes hard to understand. For, sorry, for um, native English speakers, it's sometimes hard to understand how much it takes out of you to try and express yourself in a language different than the one you grew up with kind of adds a layer that puts a restraint on your vocabulary and ability to express yourself, and it's sometimes really frustrating. People face that in one of two ways. They either decide that they're going to be the people that are going to ask all the questions, like when you don't understand something you ask, and you kind of risk looking as if you have no idea what's going on, or they decide to not ask and risk not understanding. And that's where our backgrounds, cultural differences, national stereotypes, and personal issues come into play, because it takes something really strong to make you overcome the fear of getting there. My, um, one of my favorite people researchers, <laughs> Dr. Brenna Brown, says that courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. And in the WordPress community, we also have a phrase for this. It's decisions are made by those who show up. However, if you're a non-native English speaker of the WordPress community, you also know that ending of this phrase that is unspoken. Decisions are made by those who show up and they are to speak up. Speaking up takes a lot out of you, especially the first time, especially the first couple of times. 
Most of you, because every, mostly because every community has rules, and when you first get involved in one, you don't know it. There are boundaries, borders, walls, unspoken rules, things that you don't know how to, how to handle. And I want to talk a little bit about boundaries, which is like what's okay and what's no, not okay. And every community has some, but also like every culture has some, and every person has some. And um, when there are boundaries, that's actually okay. Because when we don't set boundaries, <laughs> we let people do whatever they want and end up like kind of resentful and hateful and we don't appreciate their choices. We get mad at them. And for the first kind of 20 years of my life, because I'm very passionate and people get me mad, uh, for the first 20 years of my life, I just assumed people were sucking to piss me off, you know? <laughs> and then I spent quite a bit of time back-channeling, talking to people privately, people that were kind of misbehaving, public channels, and there was one thing I kind of realized. What if people were doing the best they can? So I decided to try a new strategy, a new basic principle when communicating online and trying to resolve issues across cultures and language barriers. And the principle was the following. I never know if somebody is doing the best they can or not, but when I assume they are, my life gets better. The generosity to assume the best about people is a selfish act because the life that changes first is yours, is your own. But it also lets you be a lot more compassionate when you com communicate to people and they feel that and they bring that back. So bon boundaries are important. Boundaries are, they're not fake walls, they're not separation, they're not division. A respect. It's saying, here's what's okay and what's not okay for me. And we can't ever know what the boundaries of, of people are, um, all of them, because there's no way to know all the cultures. There's no way to study everything that happened to people in particular locations since they, you know, were born. Um, you can never know what it is to be someone else. But not knowing is never going to be a problem in our community as long as you don't assume or force your opinion, but ask. There is another quote, another thing Brené Brown taught me, which is imperfections are not inadequacies. They're reminders that we're all in this together. And the Japanese have a beautiful, untranslatable phrase for this, which is wabi-sabi. It's finding beauty in imperfections, the acceptance of the cycle of growth and decay. I find that curiosity is the key. When you approach people with curiosity, even if you don't understand anything about their culture, asking questions is always good. They'll never turn you away. They'll be happy to share. They'll love to share. And you always make mistakes, you know? You will bring white flowers to a Chinese person not knowing that, you know, white flowers are only brought to funerals in China. Because that symbolizes that, you know? You're gonna, you're gonna show the victory side to a British person and, like, get slapped in the face because, you know, this means something else in Great Britain. You're gonna say okay to a Spanish person and get a really, really deep frown, because that's kind of a way to say, to tell someone they're an asshole in Spain. And, uh, <laughs> and that's okay, as long as you're prepared to kind of own this and uh, then ask, how should I do it? Sympathy, empathy, and compassion <laughs> are three words I did not know before I got involved with the WordPress community. So this is like something I kind of had to study. With sympathy being when you feel for someone, empathy when you feel with them, and compassion 
the urge to step in when somebody is struggling and do something about it. And compassion is not a virtue, it's a choice. It's something we choose to practice. I decided that, and all of a sudden everything got a lot easier when communicating to anyone from any different culture. Kindness is a universal language, and people feel it even across chat rooms. And caring? <laughs> caring is the coolest thing I've ever seen anyone do. Somebody taught me that last year, sitting over there and speaking after me, so make sure you sit around and um, wait for his story as well. So where, let's go back to where we are today. Paris has a small slice of the WordPress world today. WordCamp Europe has grown so much in the past four years that it has started feeling overwhelming for people. I hear more and more the phrase, it's not the same when I talk to the people that came for, to the first one, to the second one. Um, and that's scary. It mostly means it's so big that you don't really have enough time to form meaningful connections with the new people that you meet. But that doesn't mean we can't try. So, as WordPress goes beyond borders, we can try and go beyond WordPress. <laughs> In the next two days, you don't only have to talk WordPress. Um, try and form meaningful connections by sharing something personal. I'm not saying networking is not all, all, all right. Of course it is. But try to share something real about yourself, something unique. Like, tell someone a personal story or share something that's uniquely yours. And, or teach them an untranslatable word from your language. Like the word that I cannot pronounce in German that means grief bacon. What's that word, Casper? <laughs> it's, it's that thing that you do when you're grief-stricken and like just overeat yourself out of grief. There is a unique word, word for this. There you go. <laughs> or my favorite, most favorite, uh, untranslatable word in the world, Ubuntu, which means I find my worth in you and you find your worth in me. <laughs> and because we have time, I think we still have time, right? Um, I'm going to finish with, um, by starting to share something personal. Um, I bought my first poetry book in maybe 15 years in Boston this March. I kind of thought that I had grown up to be too cynical for poetry, so I stopped reading poetry at some point. But uh, I got into a Barnes and, Barnes and Noble to warm up. <laughs> and um, it was just a, a book that was sitting next to, the, um, next to the coffee table that I sat at. And um, caught me off guard. It's by 20-something-year-old uh, Sarah Kay. And uh, if you allow me, I'll uh, read my favorite poem from that book to you. When they bombed Hiroshima, the explosion formed a mini supernova so that every living animal, human, or plant that received direct contact with the rays from that sun was instantly turned to ash. What was left of the city soon followed. The long-lasting damage from nuclear radiation caused an entire city and its population to turn into powder. When I was born, my mom says I looked around the hospital room with, this, uh, with a stare that said this. I've done this before. And still, for someone who has apparently done this before, I still haven't figured anything out yet. My knees still buckle every time I get on stage. My self-confidence can be measured out in teaspoons mixed into my poetry, and it still tastes funny in my mouth. 
so no matter that I have inhibitions to fill all my pockets. I keep trying, hoping that one day I'll create something that I'll be proud to let sit in a museum exhibit as the only proof I existed. My parents named me Sarah, which is a biblical name. In the original story, God told Sarah she could do something impossible, and she laughed. Because the first Sarah, she didn't know what to do with impossible. And me? Well, neither do I. But I see the impossible every day. Impossible is trying to connect in this world, trying to hold on to others while things are blowing up around you, knowing that while you are speaking, they aren't just waiting for their turn to talk. They hear you. They feel exactly what you feel at that same time that you feel it. It's what I strive for every time I open my mouth, that impossible connection. There is a piece of wall in Hiroshima that was burned black by the fire. But on the first step, a person blocked the rays from hitting the stone. The only thing left is a permanent shadow of positive light. When I meet you in that moment, I am no longer a part of your future. I quickly become a part of your past. But in that instant, I get to share a part of your present and you get to share a part of mine. And that is the greatest gift of all. So if you tell me I can do the impossible, I will probably laugh at you. I don't know if I can change the world yet, because I don't know that much about it. And I don't know that much about reincarnation either, but sometimes if you make me laugh hard enough, I forget where I am and where I came from. This isn't my first time here. This isn't my last time here. And these aren't the last words that I'll share. But just in case, I'm trying my hardest to do it right this time around. Thank you. <laughs> Petya, thank you. It always inspires me when I see people getting up and giving a presentation like that in a second language. Uh, I, I come here very aware of my own uh, advantage in having English as a first language and yet to see speaker after speaker getting up and overcoming that first fear of the language and then that second fear of opening up always, always gladdens my heart. Um, we'd like to take any questions if anyone uh, wants to ask Petya something. Um, I'd like to start with one. Petya, you kind of hinted there that there was a political dimension to the kind of community that, that WordPress is and has become. We don't talk about that very much. No, we don't. Why? I don't know. Um, people feel uncomfortable bringing it up or just talk about it not publicly with each other, to each other. Um, not entirely sure. I kind of have this, this feeling like there's the kind of the American community and the others. <laughs> and that's, there's a feeling of separation that is just like little, there are little pieces that happen that kind of separate uh, those worlds. I kind of hope that that goes away soon. Uh, I don't think that there should be anything like this. Yeah, I mean, WordPress was, after all, founded on both sides of the world, right? Um, so yeah, I, I kind of really feel that uh, if kind of the global community, uh, non-native English speaking global community finds its voices, kind of steps up being a little bit bolder, maybe those things will disappear. Because there's no lack of people wanting to he hear each other, hear, hear each other out, I don't think. I think, you're, I, mean, I think you really need to look around an event like this to see people wanting to engage. And if you want to call that politics, maybe you can. I don't, I don't see anything wrong in talk, talking politics. It's just <laughs> one, no, it's just one way to, no, to learn more about each other. I mean, last year we all hugged you guys after you know, what happened. It was like basically the same day of WordCamp Europe that yes, the results was. were coming out, right? I still want to hug you, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Hug a Brit, please. Okay, right. <laughs> yes. They're not over it yet. So if you see a British person, there's like about 200 of them. 
Give them a hug. They have one more you, you, WordCamp Europe left in them. Um, yeah. Do we have a question <laughs> up at the top? No. no. Oh, yeah. We have a question down below. Sorry. Hello. Thank Hi. For your talk. Uh, just a little question. You say um, you can't say something to a French or Frenchy. <laughs> I knew that was going to come back and bite me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you can say to other. Uh, and wha what is it? I'm curious. No, I wasn't. I was just terrified to speak English. You know, it was like people told me that if I speak English to French people, they will be offended. You know, and they will not respond. And you know, there's it's like a common stereotype about uh, about French people. Sorry, guys. Yeah. That you that you don't really like you don't really like speaking a language other than uh, other than yours, which is I mean, I find that stereotypes can be overcome. Uh, definitely, but uh, this was like I was, I don't know, I was 18, I didn't even speak English that well, and somebody told me like, yeah, they will like frown at you if you speak anything other than French at them. Um, I have so many French friends right now, I don't speak French, so they all speak English to me, <laughs> so I have no trouble speaking English to French people. Just I can as long say, as I keep grinning, you know. <laughs> I've been coming to France now for about 20 years, and I, I genuinely feel it's got better. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's just you guys. Oh, but you know that as well, right? <laughs> but normalement. Huh? Uh, so, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, any more questions? I don't see any hands okay. raised. So what we'll do, Petya, you will be around all yeah. through the events. I will be here. Uh, everyone's Petya's friend. Please come up and talk to her. And if you've been watching the slides, she wants to talk back to you. So can I ask for one more round of applause, please, for Petra Rakowska? Thank you.